like technical difficulties to get your blood pressure going in the morning. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so Brenda and I have been going round and round this morning, uh, trying to bring this information to you because um, it's, you know, there's nothing harder than getting started in real estate. And um, when people are having great success, like Brenda is, I want to share it with you because um, you need that momentum when you're getting started in real estate. So I'm Jenny Williams with Get a Real Estate Life and welcome Brenda Blanton. Thank you. I'm Brenda Blanton with Blanton Real Estate, uh, brokered by EXP Realty. How are you today? I'm wonderful and uh, I am singing your praises and so excited and proud for you. Um, let's share uh, with our audience, um, you know, when did you get your license? So I, I got my license, I think it was the beginning of November um, of 2020, last year, at the last November. Um, and then I still had a full time job. You know, I was in business to business sales. And so I actually started real estate actively on the first Monday in January. Of this year. So January 6th, I think it was. I was like, all right, now I'm, I finished one. I'm starting full time all in. Well, and I remember the day that we rented out the movie theater and we had a training in January and you came down the stairs and you asked a bunch of questions. And when you walked away, uh, Gusty and I said, oh, yeah, she is going to be on fire. <laughs> I was really excited too to get started. Like I think every training event that you put on or anything at DXP, like I just I was on everything. Like I was just soaking it all in. I think hours of training. Um, sometimes in the evening, I just put in my my AirPod and just listen to like everybody's watching a movie, and I just had like training for new real estate <laughs> in my ear. <laughs> so it's probably annoying to my family, but it worked out. I'm sure they're not annoyed today because um, you've been able to have so many closings. So since then, you know, that was your first, you know, that first week in January when you really started. Um, right. How many uh, closings have you had? So I got my first closing was the end of February. So immediately right out the gate, I had a, someone in my sphere, you know, someone that my husband knew that um, and that I'd had worked with before. So knew me personally. And I closed that at the end of February. And since then, um, I've had 13 closings and then I have um, four in contract. Uh, 13, that is huge. And so you were able to even cap and get to 100% of your commission, right? Yes. Yeah, so the four that I have in contract, I'm actually going to get 100%. So Yay. <laughs> I'm super excited about that. <laughs> well, and do you, can you, do you know how many of those have been listings? Uh, so out of the 13 that I've closed, uh, six have been listings. So, and then, and then with, with all the ones that I'm about half and half with okay. right that now. is unheard of for a first year agent. Okay. It's unheard of. That is the healthiest um, ratio that um, I have heard because most of the time new agents are heavy on the buy side. So um, you have a very healthy balance, which is very unusual. So, um, and good morning, Drew. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, I love the, the support system. Thank you. Um, so you have to share, you know, like, what are some of your tips? Like, how have you been able to do this? I mean, you had a closing, like, when after you said, okay, this is it. You had a, a closing the next month. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So for the, for the listings, my strategy, so for listings, once it all came from my sphere. Almost five of the six listings so far have came from my sphere. And and I believe the reason I got those from relationships. So like in real estate, it matters so much your relationship with others in real estate and your clients. And right. my past careers, um, I kind of had a reputation of being good, to, easy to work with and being thorough. And if I said something, it was done. And so um, a lot of those listings came from people I've done business with in the past at previous businesses and me just, you know, letting them know and. Um, and then, so once I got the listings, um, the buyers came, so it, the buyers, not, I think one of them, maybe two were in my sphere, but the rest were just, you know, cold leads. So once I had a listing, um, I would get about two buyers per listing that would come from that. So they might call me off the sign and, um, and I would get a buyer from that. So even if that house wasn't the one for them, I would find another home for them. Okay. That's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> that is all of the theory um, uh, of how it's supposed to work um, textbook. So, yeah. um, so the biggest thing with the with people calling off the sign, I'd say if I had to give any advice on that, is that um, a lot of times people call, say you have a listing that's a five bedroom and it's 300,000. 
and someone might call you off a sign or off just see it on Zilla or whatever and call you and 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 they'll say, hey, I just was looking at your house. Does it have a basement? No, it doesn't. OK, never mind. Thank you. And they want to hang up. And so what I do is just keep them on the phone. So just, oh, no, it doesn't have a basement. Is that what you're looking for? And then, you know, just keep discovering what their needs are and keep them on the phone. And that way I can say, well, you know, I have a huge I have a huge fear of, um, you know, brokerage of, of real estate agents around me. And I get a lot of times I, I know when something's coming and I just kind of give my value. Um, so is it OK? Let's follow up tomorrow. You know, and we just kind of keep it from there. So I've, I've been able to close at least a million this year off of just that conversation. Which is fantastic. So what's your total volume right now? Three million. So right now it's three. I think with my end contracts, I'll be about four and a half million. I'm hoping to close the year at five. That's my goal. Yeah, that's fantastic for a first year. Y'all, this is why she's on here sharing. So what you just said is exactly how I trained all of my team members when I had buyer's agents and had a, had a team years ago is know what your inventory is out there. Right now, y'all, that is super easy to do because there is nothing. So look at those hot sheets every single day and get familiar with what does have that extra bedroom, what does have that main level garage, what does have that basement um, in that school systems, you know, the school systems that you work. So um, I used to be completely old school and you can do it either way. If you are lucky enough to get one of those calls in front of a computer, you can, while you're on the phone, say, well, have you seen this one that's right down the road? Um, it actually has a basement if you don't know that already. So I used to put together binders of all of our listings and then all of the um, surrounding uh, houses that had a little bit different features just so that I could continue talking to people on the phone. Then they'll, they just like you were able to convert people, they know, oh, wow, she really knows what she's talking about. Um, she is a resource. She is helpful. And uh, you can really bring that expertise. So way to go, girl. Absolutely. And then also, I think the other thing that I do to capture those buyers is I tell them, like, I'm so excited you called me about my listing. Like we go view my listing. And I'm like, I'm so glad you, that you came to see my listing. If, and a lot of times they say, well, this isn't for me. And then I'll go I'll go into the importance of like, you know, calling agents who are listing the home is not your best strategy. You need to be represented. Like I'm an honest agent and I, but I'm representing the seller right now. We haven't signed a buyer agency and, um, and you know, you're not going to be, you're not going to get the best out of your um, experience if you don't have uh, an agent. So I go over kind of why you don't call agents off signs, <laughs> you know, and, and why you hire someone. And cause a lot of people just call off a sign. They go view the house. I see another one. They call the agent. And they just go hopping, around, you know, looking at homes by calling the listing agent. And um, and they're not going to help. You're not going to point out the things you need to see because it's their listing. They don't want to point those out. You know? Well, and that's true. Um, but I think there's a huge misconception somehow. And I don't know if people are actually allowing this, but there's a huge misconception that if I call the person on the sign that I'm going to get, um, you know, half. Uh, taken off the, the top of, of the price. I've had people call me on my listings this year and really expect that. And wow. I've had to have those conversations. That is not how it works. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, a real estate company gets paid based on how many sides are involved. So, um, and that's already worked out and negotiated. So it doesn't come off the, the top of the price. So um, I think that's where a lot of people are thinking maybe you're the only one that would know information about that. And uh, I could also get a discount. So way to go for that and being a resource and really training and educating people. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you let your sphere of influence know that you were in the business? Social media. I mean, I it's really just Facebook. I, I get on Instagram, but I'm, I mostly do. I do it both, but most of my sphere is my age and my sphere is on um, on Facebook. And so, of course, you know, text messages, phone calls and things like that. But initially, I think just doing Facebook posts 
um, and just showing how active I am. And every time I, every time I showed a house, I'm like, I'm showing a house. <laughs> Anything I did, I like literally like went and picked up my, my first signs. I'm like signs in the trunk, you know, <laughs> like that didn't do anything. I hadn't even sold a house yet, but I had signs in the trunk. Um, and so I just, you know, continuously post what I'm doing. And then it became more authentic, meaning I actually was doing things and it was, and it was educational and, um, and things like that. And then, once I started with the social media and I continue to do that, I also do, um, I do bomb bomb videos um, every couple of weeks to my sphere on text message. So like, let's say we have a holiday, like Labor Day, I just send out something to just, you know, individual, I'll, I'll do one message, just, hey, hope you had a good Labor Day. You know, just think of like, just wanted to touch base with you and say something about, you know, I'm a resource, whether you need me or not. Like if you know someone um, and I, and just, if you need a plumber, electrician, you know, all the, anything to do with real estate, not just buy or selling anything to do with your house, call me and I have resources. And, um, and you'd be surprised how many people text me and say um, things like, Hey, I need a drywall repair. Do you know anybody? And that just keeps us continue, just them knowing I'm an expert, anything home. Right. Even if it's not my expertise. I can find someone in my, in my uh, sphere that can help them. And developing those relationships, you know, making them stronger. Me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm giving, uh, yeah, you're giving value because, because right now they might be renovating a bathroom and don't, and they just don't know who to call to do the tile, you know, cause they put it on Facebook and everybody has their favorite tile. Right? <laughs> so they're like, Oh, I trust Brenda. If she's used them or had a client who used them. But you know, once they renovate that bathroom and, and get even more equity in that house, they're going to want to list it eventually, most likely. And, and I hope to be the first person that they think of because I helped them when I wasn't getting paid on it, you know, when right. I was, being a resource for them. So um, I love the bomb bomb and uh, you're um, it is so important to post and document that you're actually working in real estate because people want to know that you're referable. They don't want to send or, you know, they're scared to send referrals to people that they're just not certain can do the job or really aren't doing it. And uh, that's why it is important to post those signs in the trunk. It is important to say, hey, I'm running numbers for um, XYZ listings. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm negotiating multiple offers today. So um, for uh, anybody who is not in real estate, and <laughs> you wonder why everybody does that. <laughs> it's because you want to show that you are referable, that you are an expert. Good morning, Lynn. So glad that you're here today. And that you're, I mean, if you're busy, then you're, they know if you're busy, then you're going to be busy for them because they're because, you know, there are people who do real estate part time and, and they're not busy all the time with the real estate. So they're not as, um, you know, familiar with what's on the market and resources and things. And and I think that, um, you know, if I when I was buying houses before a real estate agent, I wanted someone who was busy. I wanted someone who was out there hustling. And, you know, and I knew that like if I called, they pick up and if they didn't, they call me back quickly because that's the kind of person they are. They were, you know, they're on it. They're energetic and they're just a go getter. And that's what I looked for. So when I, you know, came into real estate, I was like, well, that's who I am. And so this might be a good fit for the people who are looking for that, you know. Right. So. Um, and so I love that. So what are some other tips that um, maybe some things that you do or. Yeah. Um, OK, so since we talked about listings, that's one. But with buyers, um, this getting in real estate this year is crazy as a buyer's agent. Right. When you're supporting yes. uh, whenever you're helping a buyer, there's buyer fatigue, uh, you know, and and it's just very stressful for some people. So I decided, um, you know, I did a lot of training. I took your six figure intensity. I did a lot of YouTube videos. EXP had a few mastermind classes that I took and I just, I kind of gathered all the things I like and put it together. But I have found for a buyer's agent, um, there's like three things that have helped me win a lot of my contracts against multiple offers. And um, one is to have a good relationship with the agent on the other side. And so- yeah. I mean, call them like you're not annoying, like call them and talk to them. Like if Jenny has a listing and my client calls and says, I want to go see it. The first thing I do before I even show it is I call Jenny. Hey, Jenny, I'm about to set up a showing. I'm so excited. Anything I need to know, you know, and then we go view the house. I call Jenny back and I go, OK, we loved it. Tell me what's important to your seller. Like what is their goals out of this transaction? 
is, right. you know, and you might tell me it's, you know, it's not, it's money. If everybody wants money, the, you know, the highest net profit, but you know, they really want to move out by Thanksgiving. Right. And I go, okay, good. Well, what's important to you, Jenny, as a real estate agent, what can I do to be a good fit for you? Because, because you might have two offers that look exactly the same, but one agent just emailed you an offer and, and then the blind I, email. Yes, the blind email. And I called you and I, I said, I know your your sellers who you're representing, but what about you, Jenny? Like, what can I do? Like, what's important to you? And you say, you know, I'm all over the place. If you had a transaction coordinator, that'd be cool. <laughs> um, you know, whatever it is, like honestly, it's important for us, you know, to I just like a lot of communication or whatever your thing is. And I'm like, okay, well, great, I can do that. And so then when I that's one thing is communication. I want the other agent to be my best friend because we're going to be working together for a few months and nobody wants to work with someone who's, right. who's not trying to work with or is not right. responding. And this seems like so basic, but it is so the truth. I mean, how many times have you gotten just really, I had an agent uh, uh, write an offer on one of my listings earlier in the year and uh, browbeated me about the price and said, I should be lucky to take it. And there's no way I want to work with that agent. So, and, and, and I want everyone to know too, at, why she's saying this, this is very authentic because this is who Brenda is. This is not like, Hey, I'm pretending to be your best friend. This is, she is easy. Just last night I went to show one of her properties and I was really hoping that I was going to be able to write an offer on it. And yeah, I called her. We discussed the whole thing. She told me all about it. I mean, we were ready to roll. She had sent me prelim title. Like I knew that the second they said yes, I was going to write that offer and get it over to her immediately because I knew what was needed. I knew how to explain it to my people. I knew how to get that sense of urgency up. It wasn't exactly the right fit, but that's how we work together. I mean, get, you know, investigate that before you get there. So it sounds like somebody's listening to their training. And uh, yes. yeah, and, and it's it's awesome because you um, and I learned that honestly so quickly. Oh, and Chad just jumped on and Chad is one. Chad was my mentor right when I started Chad Beasley. And, and what an awesome mentor. Gosh, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I know. I tell you daily, I'm lucky. Um, so for he was my mentor. And then and then you and, you know, Gus, you have all this training as well. And so I combined those things. But the first thing Chad told me was um, that was so important to me. And, I, and it it was obvious when he said it and it clicked. And I, is relationships obviously matter. Like if you're going to be in real estate for a long time, then your reputation is as much as I mean, everything you have. Like, so for example, if you, that person that kind of was rude to you on the phone, the other agent, now they get another buyer and they have an offer they're putting into one of your listings. That poor buyer has no idea that they're already a step back because you're naturally going to open that off and go, oh, really? That person now you're going to, you're going to do what's best for your client. But if you have two side by side, that are exactly the same, then you you can tell your client this this person is going to be really easy to work with. I've worked with Brenda multiple times. She's right. on it. Her lend, you know, usually her relationship with the lenders are great. Her closing ratio is high. You know, she does everything she can to make it go through. I've worked with the other agent. It wasn't the same experience. So if we're just looking at, you know, I mean, it's, it it is it is important. And um, and Chad's so good at that because every time I talk to anyone about Chad, they're like, oh, I love working with him. I did a deal with him last week. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. He does deals like every day. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, but but, you know, that's the that's the biggest thing is for the buyers is to have that good relationship and then and then write creative offers. That was another thing that helped me this year is listening to all the training and taking the things that. I could sometimes I listen to a two hour training and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, there was like one nugget that somebody said on EXP World during like an icon series, you know, on a training. And I'm like, that's brilliant. And I take that one nugget and then I watch another training and I put it all together that felt like stuff I would want to do. But writing really creative, um, creative, creative offers has helped me a lot too, um, just to differentiate. And then I do the bomb bomb videos. When I submit an offer, I do a video. And I just tell them who I am, who my client is, you know, just the basics. Like um, I usually find something to compliment on the listing. Like if you had a listing and and it was obvious they took very good care of that home, then I'd usually tell you that. Like we loved it. Obviously, it's well maintained. Like we're going to put in an aggressive offer. It's attached to this email. This is what it is. These are the highlights. 
you know, I don't want mine to get lost in all your 40 offers you have. So here's why mine is going to be different. And these are the four things I put in our contract that's going to differentiate my contract, hopefully, from the others you have. So I hope we get to work together. You know, something I like that. I love that idea. And um, I've even taken all of this to another level. So I love that. Y'all, please listen up. That is so um, such a great tip, such a good nugget for you to have. And uh, Chad said, y'all pay, pay close attention to Brenda. There's a reason she's doing so well and she's going to have an extremely successful career long term. She gets um, what it takes and listen to her and her and, and learn for sure. And um, I Chad. <laughs> I listened to him like I, I swear if you looked at like I called him every day like he's like I probably he probably regretted me being his mentee <laughs> no 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 I know he doesn't yeah. and Austin said hey Chad spoke very highly of you at the first find out Fridays as well Brenda so Aww, yeah, he's out there and you know that it, matters too having people cheering you on and everyone's different but I am just that motivates me like, you know, everyone has their, their thing that gets the lights, the fire underneath them. Some of it's just money. And that's, that's good. That's not me. I know that if I just work real hard, the money comes, but, um, but I am like, I do love cheerleaders. Like when, you know, whenever Chad's like, Oh my God, you're like one cell away from capping. I'm like, you know, and, uh, and me and you talk and, you know, you're doing, you're doing awesome. Keep it up. Like, you know, just do this one more thing to elevate that and to get to the next level. And, um, and that's something that our team is just awesome at. That's helped me a lot because going from like business to business sales and, and being in an organization. And then when you're a real estate agent, you're self-employed, right? You're, you're, there's no one telling you to get up and go to work. No, you know, there's no one lighting the fire, like, you know, and there's, there, so, so you really have to do that yourself, but having, having people around you kind of cheering you on for me, that's been, been huge. Well, and but you're you're doing the work and making it happen. And so you get us excited. <laughs> we get super excited when people contact us and are engaged in their business. And then we see them going out and doing because we know the doing is going to produce results. And uh, it makes us happy and it gets us motivated to go and do also. So um, we love that. And, you know, I said earlier when we started that getting started in real estate is the hardest. It's 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 hard to get that, you know, that whole ball rolling and uh, pushing that, you know, uh, rock up the hill. <laughs> it's scary too, financially and just like there's self-doubt. And like, there's a lot of real emotions that when you start and not just real estate, any business adventure, when you leave something you are very confident and you've been successful doing and you step out and, you know, and do something new, you're going to go through that. That's why the cheer, not the cheerleading, but that's why people who say you've got this is, is helpful because no matter how confident you are, um, you have some self-doubt and a little bit of self-doubt is healthy, you know, because if you're too confident, then you think you can't learn and you can't grow and you, you just, you, you're not like a know-it-all, but um, so a little bit of self-doubt I think is healthy because you always know that like, Hey, if I stop working, if I stop doing what I'm doing, I might not succeed, you know? So, right. um, and so being scared, I mean, I've multiple times in this new venture, I've walked into a situation where I felt very unprepared in the way of like, this is my first listing appointment or this is my, you know, whatever it is. And there's nerves um, that are real. And, 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 and then you wake up and you're like, what do I even do today? And I'll tell you, your six figure intensity has been huge for me because I think as a new real estate agent, part of it is like, what the heck do I even do? Like, there's not a boss telling you today, I need you to make these phone calls. This is who you're going to call. Are these the companies I want you to target or whatever it is? It's, now you're a real estate agent, like <laughs> go real estate. <laughs> and so, right. And so I love like the six figure intensity actually gave, you know, me a checklist and I did it. I mean, that's what I did is there's a checklist of 20 things you can do every day and the points and, and, um, and I just do them and always, always, there's always activity and it's genuine, not just because I'm a real estate agent, anything I'm doing, I try to incorporate real estate into it. So, you know, if I'm at the park with my kids and I'm talking to somebody like, you know, and real estate comes up great, you know? Well, but, and so you have done events. So share some of the events that um, you've done. 
Yeah, I actually got a listing recently off an event I did. Um, so I love, I'm a, I'm a network fanatic. Yeah. I love networking and there, I spend 10 hours a week networking um, minimum. I mean, you know, cause you, you know, you try to work 40 to 50, whatever <laughs> let's just say. Um, but, but I spend a lot of time networking because it, it gives, it gets me business um, and it gives uh, my, my clients value. So if I like, I might sit down with a plumber, an electrician, a painter, a whatever, or at lenders, and I find out what programs they have that might best suit my clients. So I do a lot of networking. That's about 10 hours a week. And that doesn't pay me anything. All that does is makes me more, a better, a better fit for my clients. Um, so that, that work, I don't get commission off it. They don't give me anything for referring a painter to a client. But when my client hires me, because of all that work, immediate value that I bring. <clears throat> so that's 10 hours a week. And then I do events and like I do local business highlights and I, I, I interview people online. I try to promote their business, a lot of giving, because once you give, 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 eventually, you know, you do wow. see returns to it. But naturally, just just having that servant giving uh, mentality. And so I did foster kind of foster a neighborhood here in Chelsea. And I used to live there. So it was very easy. I knew the neighborhood really well. And I started doing um, a lot of like marketing to that neighborhood, um, showing up, driving through, like, like kind of like the mayor of the <laughs> neighborhood. Right. Um, and I, and like in the summer, I bring an ice cream truck out to the pool and um, give all the kids free ice cream. Um, and I post it on their Facebook page and everybody knows I'm there. And so, you know, every, one, one Sunday a month, I bring out the ice cream truck. And I got a listing from that is uh, randomly, you don't see a lot of people just send their kids, you know, it's free ice cream. Like um, I'm not out there like hire me. I'm just doing something for the community, knowing that hopefully when they think uh, selling the house, they remember the girl who's giving their kids ice cream. That's right. So, <laughs> so I got that. Um, the the neighborhood that, that I did the ice, I did all summer. I didn't get any listings off of it. Right. I just, I was like, this is going to take every summer, me being consistent and all year round doing things for the community. And I got a call and he was a, a Facebook message that said, are you that real estate girl? <laughs> <laughs> I am that real estate girl. I'm that real estate girl. And, um, you know, and it was like, you know, I, I listed um, their home and I sold them another home, which was, you know, a lot of revenue <laughs> for me this year. So way more than what the ice cream truck cost me and my time for being by the pool. And, you know, and so, so that's one thing I do is um, just try to narrow in and just instead of, instead of marketing all over the Shelby County, I'm, I try to focus on, you know, a smaller area because I could be more impactful um, to a smaller, a smaller neighborhood than the entire city. And so pointing out a couple of things that um, just making sure our audience hears those little nuggets. One is the networking and spending about 10 hours per week doing that because visibility, Facebook, visibility. So your reach is high because of visibility. And you know, my word is inescapable. <laughs> and um, that's what you're doing. You're driving through neighborhoods and you're targeting them. Visibility, inescapable. Um, so, and then highlighting your community businesses online. Okay. Inescapable and giving back. So these are the things that, I mean, she's only been doing this for 10 months. And uh, you have gotten all of this success in a short amount of time. But you hear, um, if you're watching this and trying to get started and get the ball rolling, she is in front of people all the time, in front of people all the time. And that is why you're being so successful. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing your story. And Kelly from Dothan. Hey, Kelly, how are you? She jumped on and, you know, she said, hey, this is such a great story and so inspiring. And, uh, you know, again, Kelly's been in the business as long as Chad and I have. And people like you motivate us to go and do more. So we uh, we're so grateful for you, Brenda. And how can people reach you if someone wants to call you and say, um, girl, tell me more. I loved this. You know, uh, you're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so my um, website is Brenda Blanton, my first and last name, brendablanton.com. And um, my phone number is 205-706-9672. Um, and I'm on Instagram and Facebook. And I have a link tree with all the interviews that I've done. If you ever want to check out those local business highlights, um, it goes to a YouTube channel too. But 
those are those are a lot of fun if if you've never done one as a real estate agent if you've not, I know Jenny you do life along 280 um it's it's amazing when you give back and promote someone else's business how I mean one of my listings came from that like I promoted that business and so when they were out working and saw a need, they sent it back to me. I didn't ask for it, but it's just the way that, that life works is the more you give, you naturally end up receiving whether you ask for it or not. Just just keep having that servant mentality and working yeah. really hard and uh, and keeping a positive mindset through it all, I think, is um, is really key. But yeah, so my email um, is Brenda, Brenda Blanton dot com. I made it easy. And then my, <laughs> my website is Brenda Oh, and Zach has a question. And by the way, Bev says that you don't know it, but she just copies what you do. And uh, <laughs> it's fine. Why the event? And uh, Zach wants to know what platform or app you use for your local business highlight videos. Um, so what I do, this is my first live because I'm a blooper. Like, and I'll be like, oh scratch that. I didn't mean to say that that way. I'm not really good at being live because there's no telling what comes out. But, um, <laughs> but what I do is um, I do zoom, a zoom video um, interview. So we do it on zoom. And then once the interview's over, it's recorded, I put it into Canva and I add like that businesses, um, the, the businesses uh, logo to it, you know, so that way after the interview's over, I'll have their logo, their phone number, and then once I've once I've done that, that takes like two minutes. Then I then I put it on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, and then I put it on YouTube. Um, and so in typically, and what happens then is that local business will share that with their sphere, and their sphere wants to support that. Let's just say painter, um, and that painter shares. I think I did one for a painter that I love, um, and he put it on his website on his on his website, you know, and so, so my, I was, I'm doing it for them, but I also get in return, you know, visibility as well. Right. And Dak put um, that uh, link into the comments if anybody wants to check that out. So awesome. thank you. And he said, what platform or app do you use? Okay. Oh, that's the same question. Oh, that's the same question. Yeah. yeah. So it's Canva. So I use Zoom and then I just use Canva. Canva is amazing. I think every realtor probably uses it. Um, and if you don't get it, cause it's <laughs> super cheap to get the pro version, um, for sure. But, um, but yeah, Canva is something I use all the time, every day. So, well, thank you so much for taking your time and all those technical difficulties that we had to start with. <laughs> so. yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I need, he said, like, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I need to upload, this is bad, but I just started my YouTube channel. So they're all like, uploaded at the same time. And I still have like 10 more interviews to upload. Um, and eventually they'll just start popping up every week. But um, there's so many things when you get started as a real estate agent <laughs> that like you got to, you know, I was like, all right, I forgot. I, I need to have YouTube. Right. It's overwhelming. It can that's be good. overwhelming, but you've narrowed down to what's the most important thing. And that's being in front of people. Yes. And if I could take one thing away from this interview, that's what it is relationships and being in front of people. So I hope that um, you're watching. Let uh, Brenda's story inspire you and uh, get out there and be a doer and get in front of the people. They need you, especially in this crazy market, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, you, Jenny. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. And uh, I hope you have a great day doing more stuff. All right. You too. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Bye.